Hey guys, today I wanted to talk about practicing. It can be difficult to maintain your focus when you're practicing, and when we lose our focus, we're not as productive, and the things that we're working on just don't stick as well. So I wanted to give you my five favorite tips that I like to keep in mind when I'm practicing that help me stay productive and make sure that what I'm doing is effective. So number one, one of the things that I really love to do is play the measure before the section that I'm working on and the measure after. So I commonly talk about breaking down your music into smaller sections, but one of the things that I don't address quite often is playing the little bit beforehand, whether it's one measure, one beat, anything, and the little bit afterwards. The reason that I do this is because it prepares me for the performance a lot better than just strictly playing the sections. If I play a little bit ahead of time, um, then it's sort of like I'm molding everything together. So if I have section one from one measure one to four, and then section two from measure five to eight, if I sort of play the measure beforehand and the measure afterwards, I'm melding them together a little bit. And so when I'm playing them in the performance, they go a little bit smoother. Um, and I'm not just thinking about those sections. Um, it helps me just get into that next section and sort of transition out of it as well. So number two, I practice the dynamics all the time. And this can be difficult if you're playing something slower and you're playing uh, forte. When you're playing slowly, it is very difficult to keep the bow controlled and play forte. But that's something that is just an extra thing for you to work on. And when I play with the dynamics all the time, it helps me ingrain them into my mind. And so when I sort of get to the final tempo, I don't have to just struggle to remember everything. I've already ingrained everything else, so we might as well do the dynamics as well. Number three, don't push through any pain that you're having. Some pain is okay and some pain is not, but pushing through any kind of pain can be harmful and just flat out exhausting when it doesn't need to be. So pain in the wrist and in the forearm typically is not a good sign. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be out for a year or that you have tendonitis or anything like that, but it just means that there's strain in a place that, that doesn't need to be. So take a break, shake it off a little bit. Um, be careful if you stretch because you don't want to overstretch. Um, but just stop, at least take a 30 minute to 40 minute break. If not, just stop for the day. Um, a lot of times I'll get these sort of bruised fingertips when I get back into my playing or if I'm playing something new and I'm using different parts of my fingers. I have this bruising kind of thing that happens and my fingers get sore. That will go away eventually and you can play through it, but you don't have to. Don't feel like that's something that you know, you're kind of a baby for not wanting to play through. I will stop if I have this bruised fingering and it's getting in the way. Um, so don't push through the pain. Don't try to be a hero or anything. Just stop and make sure that your body is happy and healthy. Number four, take breaks often. If I'm practicing for an hour, I'll take at least two breaks for about five minutes. Um, and five minutes doesn't seem like a lot. It's not a lot on the grand scheme of things, but it's incredibly helpful to just clear your mind and sort of make yourself relax. Um, it's just, it makes all the difference for me to just get up off of this chair and go sit somewhere else or go to another part of the house. Um, and you know, you don't have to completely walk away from the room or anything like that. Sometimes just going to wash your hands or sitting down and just meditating for a minute, that really helps. But if you try to just push through for an entire hour or an entire hour and a half or whatever, then you lose focus really quickly. And taking those breaks helps you in the long run. So take those short breaks. It's so much better in the long run. Number five, experiment, experiment, experiment. When you're practicing, this is the time where you wanna really, really get out there. If you sound great 100% of the time in the practice room, then you're not practicing the way that you should be. This is your time to take risks and see what works and what doesn't. You don't wanna take those risks when you're in the performance, or worse, you don't wanna just never take risks. That's not what we're supposed to do. That's not what music is about. Um, so if you're playing something and you don't like the tone that you're getting, try moving the bow. Try making it so ridiculous that you could never fathom it actually working. Um, one of the things I like to do is when I just can't get something from sounding muddy, 
I'll just put my bow literally on the bridge and then play it and then sort of move up gradually and see where that sweet spot is where everything just kind of pops out. Um, if you don't like your phrasing, try something crazy. Try to play it 20 times, every single time different. Um, like I said, you should be taking risks when you're practicing. If you're in a practice building, I practiced in those buildings all the time, and people could very clearly hear when I messed up. And that's okay. This is your time. So make sure that you are expressing yourself. Practicing shouldn't just be monotonous where you're just running these exercises over and over again. Make it fun. So these are my top five tips that I like to keep in mind. Um, they're very helpful for me when I'm practicing. It helps me stay focused and stay happy with uh, mentally and physically. So I hope that this helped. If you have any questions or you have a suggestion that you would like to include, please feel free to leave a comment underneath the video. But until then, I will see you next time.